Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm official. I'm official. <laughs> hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with <laughs> LandGeek.com, and I'm with David Banalis, the Facebook whisperer for Coffee Talk. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. In case you don't know who we are, we are professional land investors. I've been investing in raw land since 2001 full-time. I've done over 5,200 land flips and going strong um, and making the argument that this is the best passive income model. It is a one-time sale. Then you get recurring income, just like you would with a, as you would with a, with a home, a rental home, without a renter, without rehabs, without renovations, without rodents. Because we're not dealing with a tenant, we don't deal with Dodd-Frank or RESPA or the SAFE Act. And our margins, David Benalis, Oh, man, are our margins. Ridiculous. We average 300 to 1,000% return on investment. We shuffle paper. We make money. All you need is an inexpensive computer and an internet connection, and you are in business. David Benalis, do we have the best passive income model? I haven't found anything better. I mean, ATM machines, nah, not going to cut it. Not no. going to retire your wife in you know three months. Land investing, yep, check, done. Check, done. There's one more stat there that uh, I think is key. So, right, 300% uh, ROI. So that's over the length of the entire term. What really matters is how fast your money moves. So the annual average rate of return uh, for land is – right around 180 to even 250%. So you can compare that to a bank account, 0.0001%. What is it now? Right. We, we might get to negative interest rates soon. It's getting bad. It's bad. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> if you want to learn more, go to landgeek.com. Schedule a call with David or Mike for his last training. Um all right, what are we talking about? Who's got questions for for us this morning? Topics. Coffee yeah, talk topics. topics. Otherwise, we'll just talk about you know some recent calls I had with some people. Um, still, again, I mean, no matter how many times we talk about it, Mark, like people want to work where there's no competition. Like I get it. Everywhere else in every other industry, you know, you're trying to either avoid competition or destroy them. But there is no competition in this business. There's no competition in this business. Um, there really isn't. I'm I'm closing on a on a deal soon that's like a huge bulk deal. You know, I, I don't like fifty parcels in right. an area that I've been working since. You know, in northern Nevada, where I know everybody goes. Yeah. Why was I able to get this deal? Right. But other people didn't. Right. You, you, honestly, you probably mailed to them years ago. I well, yeah. I mean, it's just you just show. It's just showing up. It is just showing up. Um, a good example is how big, you know, when you go to the mailbox, how many credit card offers do you get a day? They keep sending them to you. One day, you'll wake up and be like, oh, I need a credit card today. I need a credit card today. <laughs> and that's it. And so their margins are so big, it makes sense. Now, relatively speaking, there's no one doing this business to yeah. the size of the market. And there's no big money doing it. There's no private equity groups. There's no hedge funds. They have too much, too much money to deploy. Too much money in this business is an issue. If I give you a million dollars, David, could you go out and buy a million dollars worth of land tomorrow? I couldn't spend it in one year. That would be oh. ridiculous. I don't know if I could spend it all that, that fast. Like I'd have some issues. I need to keep money moving. I'd probably buy a wholesale at that point. I mean, that, so that's a problem in and of itself as well. So Good problems. <laughs> good problems. Um, you know. But if you don't have money, how could you do this business, Mark? Oh, my gosh. So simple. Duran started with $800. I started with $3,000. Uh, Paul Mendel had no money, right? Okay. He had money for education. So he spends all his money on education. Calls me. He's like, Mark, I've got no cash. I said, Paul, no <laughs> worries. No worries. Do you have enough money to send out a mailing? I'm like, do you have 20 bucks? 30 bucks. He's like, yeah, yeah, I've got that. He's like, I thought I need thousands of dollars. I'm like, no, no, no. Lock up a deal. Yeah. He's like, okay. So he gets it. He gets an accepted offer on his mailing campaign. And he's like, Mark, I don't have the $50 to even option it. I'm like, Paul, don't option it. 
call them, tell them you're doing due diligence and that you're going to close in 45 days. Just calls them up, says, I'm going to close in 45 days, right? He does due diligence in four hours, right? Yeah, if deal that. good, right? Then he's like, well, Mark, now what do I do? The deal's good. <laughs> I'm like, mail the neighbors. He goes out, he gets the, the, the neighbor list. The next day, he mails the neighbors. The neighbor buys it. Oh, right? man, I love it. So now, Paul gets the money from the neighbor, cash, right? Nice. <laughs> Closes with the seller. Does yeah. two deeds simultaneously. Record this one first, record this one second. He creates out of thin air with less than $100 in the mailings, like eight grand. Oh, now man. He's got eight grand. I love a double close. To do the double close. I love a double close. So it doesn't happen too right. often. Oh, I love it, though. Yeah. All right, Mr. Obi. Obi, good morning. Good morning, Obi. There's um, an action taker right there. Is is Obi, which flight school is Obi in? He is, is in he... June flight school. June flight school. Obi, how's it going in flight school? By the way, flight school is amazing. We're, we're now filling up July. For those of you uh, interested in the next flight school, uh, we do have spots open. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. And, and if, you uh, already, if you already own a toolkit, this is perfect for you. You know, if you've got some block walls you couldn't get over yourself or you want to move forward, you want to move faster, flight school is great for this. Like the money you, pl- you paid for the toolkit is applied towards flight school. It's, you know, Mark, you're so generous to even allow that. <laughs> yeah, I should cut that out, shouldn't I? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Too oh, generous. It, you are generous. Yeah, I mean, you're generous with the information. We all are, really. Um, we don't no, want to I go mean, back. Yeah, we, we, and we shouldn't. Like, that's, we want, I, I, I don't feel successful unless other people are doing really, really well. So no pressure, Obi. <laughs> better start closing some deals yeah <laughs> no worries so so any questions any questions what's what's on people's minds what's going on in the market john montero montero john hey guys what are the dates and locations for the boot camps for the remainder of the year so sure. that's a good question so the boot camp is go to the landgeek.com forward slash boot camp and we are now full for the next one in August. Um, and if there's cancellations, you might be able to get in that room. But we're, like, getting on that queue if you want to be in August. But Orlando is filling up now in October. So the next one is October. October 6th through 8th. Yeah. Ben Clark. Here's Ben. Flight school. Takeoff is tonight. Best advice for heading to flight school from Land Geek and Whisperer. That's a great question, Mark. That is a good question. My advice, Ben, is I would say, you know, when when you have that first class, the first thing you guys are going to work on is getting the list. It's really going to be, be accounting research, getting the list, scrubbing the list. Scott's going to give you a week to get your offers out, right? I would say during that first three days of county research, ask a lot of questions in the group and make sure that you're doing things properly before you go out and actually obtain the list and go to the next step. What do you think, David? I got some good advice. So, What's your advice? Um, so every flight school student has their private Facebook group. So it's them and you know the 11 other people or 12 other people in that group. If you hit a rough spot, particularly with like a, a certain process, make a video of it and post it to the group. That is the best way for us to help troubleshoot what you're going through. So um, Marshall does this. Uh, he was in the May flight school. He posts a video every once in a while, like, you know, a, a pain point. And it's so much easier to help troubleshoot whatever's going on. Um, that's a great for, you know, training VAs, but it's also great for getting help. So the better you're able to explain whatever is going on, the best we can help. And ask a lot of questions. We do not get tired of answering questions within the Facebook group. You know, we want to provide more value than what you think you're going to get. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing about flight school is that it is, it is taking action in real time 
with your class and your your you know Sherpa, if you will, Scott Todd, who's going to guide you through this. So I know for me, like whenever I get like a, a home study kit and it's like this thick, it's like I'm just overwhelmed, right? It's like drinking from a fire hose. Um, this is going to take the fire hose and, you know, in real time, break it down and you're going to eat an elephant one bite at a time with your <laughs> class and take massive action. And by the end of it, you'll be on your way doing deals. You'll be, you'll be in flight, right? But uh, what often happens that we see with information is you get the information and you just, you know, because it's hard, no one takes action. And then it just sits, right? Yeah. Where this is like you have to take action in real time, get your questions answered. You're going to be working the business in real time during that class. So it's not just academic. It's like, okay, now let's go do it. Yeah, absolutely. I, like when I see someone, you know, like get an accepted offer and how excited they are, like, man, I remember that first accepted offer I got. I never bought it, but I printed it out. I taped it to my wall, like first accepted offer. Like that was a huge milestone for me <laughs> at the time. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun stuff. And then first close, first sale, all the first. So celebrate every single win in this business. You know, there's a lot of times when you know, you're in the thick of it. And um, it's hard to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. But that's when you have to celebrate every single win. Uh, I still do. I get a donut every time I have a sale. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, a lot yeah. of donuts. I better oh, watch it. I might get diabetes if I become a good salesperson. <laughs> oh, no. Ben, all right. 20 offers a day. And that's the thing. is like even 20 offers a day will move the needle. That's one deal um, a week, Mark. Yeah, easy. Easy. So one deal a week, that's four a month. That's 48 a year. Yeah, that's great. Uh, David, celebrate your rejected offers as well. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Do you see me posting those in the uh, the Facebook group every once in a while? Like, I, If anything, I post them for my own personal therapy. If I can hedge out my rejection, I feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, here, now here's a question, David. Okay. Um, uh, our one-on-one -on -one coaching client, Ashok, asked okay. yesterday. I thought it was a great question. And I don't know if anyone's ever asked me this. And he, he said he wanted to know, when you get a ridiculous counter offer, do you even respond? Right? Do you yeah. even respond? It's ridiculous. So they write back counter offer. Like you offered a thousand, they counter at 50,000. I don't respond. You don't respond. Um, do you? I, I don't respond. That's but I will. I, yeah. In fact, but... Um, I'll just mail them again. Yeah. Yeah, I'll ignore it. Yeah. The um, extreme hate mails, yeah. You know what? I do take those off the list. Um, it is what it is. I mean, some people don't. Some people do. I know Scott's going to remail them every 100 days, regardless of what the outcome was. Uh, yeah, that's just me. Yeah. Some, yes, yeah, so the extreme hate mail, I've get, I get it probably once. I probably get extreme, extreme hate mail, like wishing horrible diseases on me. <laughs> um you know, <laughs> just terrible, terrible oh, afflictions. Yeah. Um, there's just so, so personally, uh, like, I don't know. I don't know the mental state that they have. Like, it's a piece of raw land. Like, I'm not offering, like, a, it's not like a quote-unquote top-down <laughs> offer for, like, <laughs> you know, your pet. Or, you know, like it, it's a piece of raw land you don't even go to. Right? Yeah. Like, they take it really personally sometimes. But I just – I shrug it off. Um, I like those. No, I kind of get a kick out of all the different, you know, rejection letters. I think we saw a glitter bomb happen in the last few months. Remember that one? Yeah, the glitter bomb was great. <laughs> I've never gotten the glitter bomb. Oh, man. I, I feel like my offers are too high now. <laughs> We're I'm not getting waiting. insulted enough. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting on the glitter bomb. If you're not getting insulted, then you've done your pricing wrong. Yeah. So just just to walk everybody through how we price it, like we want to have that huge margin of safety of 300. percent So what we do is we look at the comps and we divide by four. four. Divide by four. That's a, a that's a big topic that always comes up: assessed value, market value, taxable value. What's the only thing we care about, Mark? I only care about comparable sales. Exactly. Yep. 
what the market there. value is. Exactly, you know. the market value. Yeah, whatever that's the that's county that. says, I mean, yeah, it's all great. Here's Ben Clark. All the haters would buy at our offers. That's what I tell myself. Yeah. Whatever gets you through the day. <laughs> yeah. It's a good attitude to have. I like Ben Clark. Any other yeah. questions, comments? John Montero, I know you're closing deals left and right. Um, tell us a story, John. Last last deal. How much did you get down? What's your monthly? What's your What's ROI? Price? Some ridiculous, like twenty thousand down, six thousand a month for you know five month for five years. He does big deals. Big deals. Big deals. So <clears throat> that's all good. But that's not um, really. Uh, our niche, right? So we move for velocity, uh, several small deals, you know, little tiny drops in the bucket. Before you know it, you got a gallon. Oh, there we go. See, here, Look at that. There, here it is. Buy 23,600, sell $23,000 down payment, plus seller finance note value, total P&I over life of the loan, $173,740. <laughs> uh, John's in a That's different ball game than I, I'm definitely am in. <laughs> That's it. I mean, but that's a great deal. Now he can redeploy. So he's got his money out. Yeah. And he'll redeploy that 23 into another big deal. Nothing yeah. wrong with it. But, you know, the funny thing is, is like, you know, when we say a big deal, like, relatively speaking, like, that's not even a house. That's like, true. I mean, he doesn't have to go out. He doesn't have to go get investors. He doesn't have to go out and deal with the banks. He doesn't have to deal with private money lending and all that. Like, he's got cash. It's just yeah. phenomenal, right? <laughs> That's amazing. It's it's a it's it's great. So I mean, look, would that not move the needle in someone's life on oh deal? I'd rather do that deal than flip a house. Yeah, sixteen percent <laughs> of my money and do all that work for six months and fix and flip and meet the subs and all that. Not to mention just you know getting the financing from a bank for the deal or right. hard money lending. Now you're you're spending what fourteen and a half percent? Yeah, it's crazy. Anyways, if you want to learn how to be John Montero, oh, I do miss those days. Yeah, I miss the days of opening the mail. Very inspirational. I'm I am going to do that again. Um, I've got the technology now to do it. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you that the, what I you know the reason I I'm not doing it is I'm not getting physical mail. It's all on my phone, so I've got to share my phone screen. Yeah, David did it. Um, yeah. <laughs> PhoenixDigitalMailbox.com. I got to share my phone screen and then do it. So I actually, I will start doing that again, John. Um, and I can even do that on B Live now. Um, we have to yeah, just that's, kind that's of figure it differently. Yeah. So I'll do that. But anyways, John, that's amazing. Um, if you want to learn how to be John Montero, go to www.thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's deals of all size out there, Mark. You can buy properties in certain states for like a hundred dollars, right? That's not like this weird whole tax shuffle thing where you're just you're counter offering a hundred. You can legitimately buy a property for a hundred bucks, yeah. sell it for six hundred, or you could be like John Montero, buy a property for twenty three thousand, sell it for one hundred and seventy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and there's everything in between. Everything in between. So you know, let's say that John wants. You know, he needs, he's got another deal. Let's say it's bigger. Let's say it's 50,000. Doesn't want to use his own money. He's now he's got this note, right? He can sell 12 months of that note, generate another 25 grand, right? To an investor. Yeah. And then he's got, you know, so here's unlimited funds as well. Um, so what we're going to be doing in, uh, in Geek Pay is we're setting up a new platform to help you sell your notes if you need cash. I uh, love integration. Yeah, Which, you're you're uh, so your first favorite word is free. Your second no, no, my first favorite word is automation. automation. Okay, okay, because I can always make more money, I can't get more time, right? Right, <laughs> your second favorite word, free. Second favorite is, is free. Your third favorite word, integration at this point, <laughs> integration. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. John, are John, John, are you using Geek Pay? How are you managing your notes? I don't know if John's in Geek Pay, I don't know, but anyways, we're uh. We're making lots of improvements in there, um, especially on the support side. I, th I feel like I got in at the perfect time because you, between you and Scott, you're just like any area of this business you can improve, you're doing it. So now listing land, 
This is going to yep. come out on the podcast next Tuesday. But now we can list on landmoto.com. Uh, this is that's a game changer, Mark. Like we're providing the platform to actually sell property now as well. It's it's getting too easy. This is like throwing a grenade in a fish barrel. Oh, I know. It's it's crazy. And then uh, Tim Sika sold two properties on Land Moto. Eric Peterson sold one. He sold four properties last week. <laughs> That's great. It's amazing. Oh man. Yeah. Ah boy. So, I love this business. I love this business. I mean, there's nothing better. John probably didn't go look at that property. She, you know, I, I mean, I can't remember the last time I looked at a raw deal, a raw land. I mean, I sit on my computer and shuffle paper and do deals and automation. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, VA services are have been launched, John Montero. Um, we have our first client right now that we're beta testing, and um, we're just getting things in place. But we have the office in the Philippines. Uh, we're testing out internet, making sure that um, we have scale ready to go, um, training, all that. So when we say we're ready, we really want our clients to have an amazing experience. So um, it is it is coming. I'm thinking we should be ready very, very soon. Um, I love virtual assistants. Like, because of the whole time zone thing between the Philippines and U.S., like, stuff is done while I'm sleeping. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. It's great. So any other questions? Any other questions, comments? I don't know. We yeah. Got, I can see people coming in, coming out. It's, like, fluctuating here. Yeah, it's all good. It's all so good. what's a common objection you have received in the past? for uh, the sales side. So someone calls you, hey, Mark, uh, I saw your ad for this 40 acre in Nevada. Um, you know, what's the lowest price you could do or what's your most common objection you've received? The most common objection I receive. Um, that's a good question. You know, they're getting close. They, 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 you know, usually it's not really an objection. It's like they want to buy time. Mm, because yeah. um, you know me, I'm like, let's go. Yeah, right? I need to talk to my I, wife. Yeah. I need to talk to my husband. Yeah, I'm like, how much you want to put down? They're like, ah, uh, like let's lock it up now. I got a 90 day guarantee. Right? If if after 90 days you don't love the property, I'll either exchange your property you do love, yeah. or I'll refund you. Right? Don't get can't get out there in 90 days. You have a 365 day exchange guarantee. I'll exchange it for a like kind property that you love. I have, you know, a very simple business philosophy. Happy customers guaranteed. How much do you want to put down? So there is one scenario. Uh, best for, um, so, yeah, Ben has a great question. Can I answer this? Absolutely. Yeah. Best so, response for blind ads when I don't have inventory. So a blind ad is uh, an ad on Craigslist saying, hey, I have properties between one and 40 acres. Uh, I have too many properties to list here. Contact me for my current inventory. So they'll email you, um, you know, do you have listings that I can look at? I would just say, you know what? I just sold out of everything. I have more deals in the pipeline. Um, I will send you an email when I have something available. Or you ask them, what are you looking for exactly? So I can notify you immediately. That's pretty much it. That's it. That's it. Um, David, how's it going with our bot, by the way? It's functional. I've had a lot of people go through it now and, you know, check out Flight School, uh, check out, you know, Toolkit. Um, you can go in there and it'll point you in the right direction. So it's kind of like the, not necessarily a gatekeeper, but it's a good right. compass. So based on if you're you're just seeing this for the first time and you're just interested, shoot a message uh, over at the Land Geek, uh Facebook.com forward slash the land geek. And then it'll guide you to the correct resources so you can learn more about this amazing uh, business model we have here. That's 90% automated at its uh, polished level. And even then, if you have zero automation, Mark, it doesn't take much more than five, six, seven hours a week to do this business. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. So just go, just go there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Message us. Message us. Yeah. We, I can uh, carry the conversation there as well. 
Yeah. It's always fun. I like talking to Messenger. I sell property in Messenger, Mark. I even collect down payments there. It's crazy. Yeah, I now love- you see that Apple is coming out with their own pay via Messenger? <laughs> like Apple Pay? That's yeah. great. So that's that's coming out in the uh, the next iOS version, I think, this fall. Oh, nice. I heard that. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, right now um, it's debit card to debit card within Messenger. Okay. But if it's Apple Pay, that means they can add a credit card. They can add a credit card. Yeah. I love it. So, boom. Um, what else? Any other questions? Any other questions? Well, I hope everybody's getting value out of these coffee talks. I know Dave and I have a good time. Yeah, I mean, we just do this if there's zero listeners yeah. <laughs> or watchers. We're, we're just getting together. <laughs> um, how, how's it going with, with Facebook sales? So the, a new thing happened with Facebook where a lot of the group administrators are starting to sell advertising space on the, the header. So it's it's actually like on, on the desktop, it's probably like a two inches tall, four or five inches wide, depending on your screen, obviously. But that's a great spot to try to work an angle where you can get advertising space there. Uh, you know, they're catching off for like 30 bucks a month. You can you know buy the header space or you can purchase the pinned post. So yeah, so some groups are embracing you know, businesses posting there. Some groups are not. They're like, we don't want businesses here. So it's the Wild West, Mark. Uh, wow. <laughs> You just got to use common sense and you can really go deep with it. It's crazy. Or you can get kicked out really quick. <laughs> yeah. Unreal. Yeah, I've been put in Facebook timeout already. It's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you know what the best way to learn about that? My course I put on the toolkit. There you go. There you go. So if you want to learn more, just go to www.thelandgeek.com dot com forward slash training. I want to thank everybody for being on today's coffee talk. John Montero, Ben Clark, Dave Tankersley, Mr. Obi. Thanks for your comments. We really appreciate it. It's great seeing uh, you guys. And um, yeah, and then uh, you know, I probably next week, John or uh, John, David. Yeah, because John meant to ask. You know, we'll try to figure out how to share our share our iPhone screens. Okay, and uh, and open the mail. That'd be kind of fun. Cool. I think at the very least, what we can do is just take a, a snapshot of the uh, offer and post that. Yeah, that, we'll might, that, that might work too. Yeah, we'll figure it out one way or the other. Yeah, but it's all it's always fun to see. Like, I know, right? <laughs> uh, let's see if I go in here. Let's go over tomorrow. Yeah, a couple properties yesterday. accepted yesterday. Um, I love this service. You and need the thing, how, and, yeah. How do we automate that so that do we just give uh, our intake manager access to this app so they can it can go directly to them? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. Because you, I got you're not doing up. that. <laughs> uh, I've got my VA going in there and going in, and doing the whole bad bad mail, and then going to LG Pass, putting in the right address and remailing. So I was Isn't doing the, the uh, take a screenshot and emailing that. So yeah, I gotta figure out. A, let's talk about that after this. <laughs> All right, let's see. I've got one here. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Five point oh three acres, Colorado. We offered a thousand dollars, and they countered at five thousand twenty-five dollars. Not a deal. That's nah, no deal there. All right. Let's so, see. so what you could do is you know, have someone call them up. Ask them why they're interested in selling now, and but hey, I think at best you could probably get them down to like twenty five hundred, and even then that might not be a deal. Yeah, I mean that's yeah exactly. All right, Mr. Obi, I get out value from these coffee talks. Awesome. Appreciate well, I want to thank everybody again. Um, learn more at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Dave and Alice, Mark Podolsky. It's always great seeing you. Shh. The Facebook Shh. whisperer. And um, hope everybody's enjoying the podcast and the uh, the roundtable talks. I know we have a good time in there, but um, and also if you want to listen to it on the Land Geek app, download the Land Geek app from the App Store um, as well. It's kind of a cool way to to listen. We're improving that too. We're doing a lot. We got a lot going on. There's a lot going on, Mark. A lot That's going great. on. Things are improving. I like there it. There you go. Yeah, Kaizen, daily continuous improvement. 
Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Dave Tankersley. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. See you next week. All right. Thanks, Joe McLean. Glad you're jumping on here. All right. Thanks, David. Okay. And live broadcast.